This is the all new Jeep Grand Cherokee L and it's brand new for the 2021 model year. Now, a few things specific about the one in behind me, it's the limited trim level because in Canada and the US, we've got six different trim levels that are available. There are two different engine choices. It's available either four by two or four by four, depending on whether you're in Canada or the US. Steve here, Cars with Steve, and before we get started looking at this vehicle, I want to give Pickering Dodge Chrysler Jeep a huge shout out for giving me access to this vehicle to shoot the video for you today. Check down in the description below for their contact details. Now, this video is going to be pretty in depth. We're going to be looking at what's going on underneath the hood, first, second, third row spacing, some basics on technology as well. But if you're looking for a more in-depth look, specifically at how that media screen works, so things like setting up Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, using navigation, or how the steering wheel buttons and the instrument cluster work, check down below for those more in-depth technical walkarounds. But let's have a little bit of fun. Let's see what's going on with the Cherokee L and see if this thing is worth the buy. I love what Jeeps decided to do with the Grand Cherokee L. Very similar styling to what we'd find in the regular Grand Cherokee. The vehicle's extended out a couple extra inches just so we've got that third row spacing. But we'll get to that one in just a second. I love the moldings that are inside of this thing. We've got some well liners underneath there as well, which is always a great thing for off-roading, for rocks and things like that. But looking at the tires themselves, we've got either 18, 20, or 21 inch rubber. And that's gonna be dependent on which trim level of the vehicle you go with. I can go for the base trim level, the Altitude or the Laredo, those are going to be 18 or 20 inch tires. When you get into the Summit Reserve, so the highest trim level available, we've got the 21 inch tires instead, but it's beautiful. Now this thing is the limited trim level, so we do have 20 inch rubber on there. Looks really great, so bridge tone tires. Now as we start to move forward, we do have LED lights, and those are going to be our daytime, nighttime running lamps, and that's going to be standard across the entire vehicle lineup. We are in the limited, so we do have our fog lamps there as well. And the fog lamps are gonna be available in some trim levels, and same thing, these things are going to be LED. I love the look of this thing, the grill in the front there, Jeep badging. It's just very typical of what we'd see inside of Jeep styling as well, which is definitely a nice thing. Now, moving back a tiny little bit to the wheels themselves, and specifically looking at the drivetrain, the Grand Cherokee L is available either 4x2 or 4x4. Now, down in the States, you've got those two options. Up in Canada, we've only got the 4x4 option. So you do have a little bit of flexibility there. If you want to save a couple bucks, you could definitely just look at the 4x2. Right now, as I mentioned, I am a big fan of the styling in the front of the vehicle. You know it's a Jeep, you know what's coming at you just because of the grill that we've got inside of this thing. Like, I love the base styling inside of Jeeps. It just, it pops. It just is something very different. Moving down, we also have some nice honeycomb looks along the bottom there as well, and a little chrome lip right along the front, so it does make things pop quite a little bit. Now, taking a peek underneath the hood, we've got a little bit of a faux cover just along the top here, but nothing covering up the actual engine itself, which I don't necessarily think is a bad thing. But looking at some base styling inside of it, like I said, it's a nice look to it. And one of the interesting things is just the way that the vehicle of the engine is designed under this thing, we've got the majority of what we need to do just off to the left hand side. So we've got our windshield wiper fluid, we can easily top up some fluids, and we can easily check our oil there as well. Now, looking at engine choices and availability, whether you're in Canada or the States, two different engine choices that are available. It's either going to be the 3.6 liter Pentastar, which is what we're looking at here, or there's also an optional 5.7 liter Hemi V8. From a power perspective, this specific engine is going to be able to push out 290 horsepower and 257 pound-feet of torque. While the optional 5.7 Hemi, a little bit more powerful. It's going to be able to push out 357 horsepower and 390 pound-feet of torque. So tons of power there. And whether you look at the 3.6 liter or the 5.7 liter Hemi, they're both going to be 8-speed automatic transmissions. But like I said, really, really clean look under here. There actually is quite a little bit of space under there. And that's actually an interesting thing because if you wanted to do some aftermarket upgrades, you wanted to put in a supercharger or a turbocharger into this thing, you probably could. There's a ton of space under there in order to make it happen. And it would give you a huge boost in performance at the same time. Next up, taking a peek at the key fob of the vehicle. So beautiful Jeep styling in the back there. So we've got our Jeep logo along the back. Looking along the front of the key fob, we've got our unlock and our lock button, remote start, our trunk release, as well as our horn or our panic alarm button. Now on top of that along the side, you can see there we've got a little button there, and that's going to be in order to get access to our emergency access key. So if we need to lock our glove box, things like that, that's where we're going to gain access to it. Now remote starting the vehicle is also very straightforward. We're literally just gonna press the circle button twice, As you can see there, the vehicle's remote started. 
To cancel the remote start, we just press that circle button again once. So as you can see there, remote start is now canceled, so it is that simple. Now we do also have the option of getting inside of the vehicle using a little handle in the back here. So just underneath the P and Jeep, just to the right hand side of the camera, the rear view camera, we do have a little handle there. So we're literally just gonna push that in order to be able to lift this thing up. <laughs> Let's have a peek at the cargo dimensions. So as you can see there, we have a nice amount of width, depth, and height to this thing, with that depth being a little bit more than what we'd see in the side of a few other vehicles in this class. Now we do have the option of easily folding down these third row seats as well. Folding them down straight forward. So as you can see there, we've got a little handle. We're just gonna pull that up to release the top, fold it down. Same idea, so we're just gonna lift up, gently fold it down, but it is a flat fold there. But look at the difference in the cargo dimensions when we've got that third row folded down instead. So a lot more depth inside of this. Now, there are a few different measurements that are coming up for the actual cargo dimensions there, specifically for the height. Because few other options, because we've got the base measurement, so from the very bottom tray to the very top of the loading area. But if we go a few more inches in, we've got another one from the very bottom to the very top. So we get a couple extra inches of space when we move inside of the trunk there instead. So a few different options. Like I said, it's going to depend on how we have these seats folded down, if we have that second row folded down, etc. But the reason why I've got these multiple measurements is because you're not going to be able to get a giant box in there. But if you're stacking things, you'll get a couple extra inches of space inside. Now take a peek at the difference there when we've got that second row folded down. So one of the nice things in that when we're in that 7C configuration, so we are a 60-40 split for that second row, so 60 driver, 40 passenger, so we can fold down one side or the other if we wanted to. Now obviously, if we had the bench seat instead, we wouldn't have to worry about that second seat. We could fold down the left or the right side individually of one another if we wanted to do that. But quite a little bit of depth inside of this, like I'm actually fairly surprised. Now, lifting up the seats as well is also pretty straightforward. So we've literally just got a handle there. We're just gonna pull that up. And same idea, we're just gonna pull that up and then we can also lift the headrests up. Now, that's actually one of the cool things because we do have the option of easily lifting up these headrests if we wanted to. And then from the inside, in that media screen, we also do have an option of lowering these things as well. All right now, taking a peek at what's going on in the cargo area. So, a few things to point out. We do have a 12 volt power point in the back there. So we can easily plug some things in if we need to. And it looks like, yeah, we do have the option for our cargo shade back there as well. So we've got the cutouts there, the rough in at least. So we could look at an aftermarket Mopar accessory in order to get that cargo shade so that we can block what's going on in the cargo area there. Now we do have the option, so I do kind of like this. We've got some Velcro there for the actual straps to make sure that they're not kind of flopping all over the place. And we do have quite a few tethers back here as well. So if you've got a car seat that demands the tether system, we do have those in the back of the third row. And they are strategically placed in the back of the second row as well. We also do have the latch system. So the latch system in all the seats. So if we need that extra space, we've got it as an option. Along the right hand side, we've got a tiny little pocket back there. We've got our woofer along the back left hand side. And we also do have this fully removable tray. So we can easily pop this thing out if we want to. And a few things to point out back here. So we do have a nice amount of storage space here, which is always a good thing. We've got a little removable area here, which reveals our jack stand as well as our spigot. So if we ever need to fill the vehicle up using a jerry can, we've got that flexibility. On top of that, looking at the spare tire itself, it doesn't actually sit inside of the trunk area. It is just underneath the vehicle as well. And we can easily remove this in order to, so it's actually a little rubberized piece. That's kind of neat. Yeah, so a little rubberized piece, which literally is the lock for the actual mini spare tire. So if you need to get access to the tire, we would just unscrew it there as well. And then it would just drop underneath the vehicle. Now, moving towards the back of the vehicle, beautiful styling there. We've got our LED tail lamps there as well. We're always going to have the backup camera no matter what. And then we will have that reverse sensing system as standard technology. Rear wiper, which is always a great thing. Now, this vehicle can actually tow quite a little bit. Like I said, we do have two available engine choices. So either a 3.6 liter Pentastar or the 5.7 liter Hemi V8. With the 3.6 liter, we can tow up to 6,200 pounds. With the 5.7 Hemi, we're gonna be able to pull up to 7,200 pounds. So plenty of pulling power inside of this thing. And we do have our cover there as well. So we could do an aftermarket install if we wanted to. We can just get a basic bumper one, which is going to cut down on the amount of weight that we can tow. But I always just recommend getting it from the factory. Aesthetically, it just looks nicer. Four seven pin wiring harnesses, things like that. But if you're just gonna be carrying a bike rack carrier, et cetera, you could do something aftermarket install from the dealer instead. Filling up fuel inside of the Grand Cherokee L, straight forward along our driver's side. So it is a capless system there as well. And actually, 
I just kind of noticed that. Oh, that's kind of neat. There's a little Jeep, like an old school classic Jeep that they put right in the back there as well. So this kind of makes it pop and gives it that little extra touch. You know, fuel quality in the 3.6 is regular 87 gas, so 87 octane. But looking at the 5.7 liter Hemi V8, that is a powerhouse of a vehicle. Ideally an 89 or a 91 octane. You will notice a difference in performance when you use that specifically on that 5.7 Hemi. Now, one thing that is unique to the Grand Cherokee L is what Jeep introduced this year, and that's the third row inside of this vehicle. So it is available either as a six or seven seat configuration. Default is going to be a six, and we've got the option for a seven when we get the bench row from the factory. Now, this is actually kind of a neat thing because I love the way that these seats lift up because we've got a little latch just along the top there. We can pull that up and look at this. I love it. It's a lift up and it's a slide forward so you can like super easily get into the back of this thing. It's really, really cool. Let's have a look at some third row spacing. Well, <laughs> this is actually pretty nice spacing wise because we do have the flexibility to be able to move this second row backwards and forwards a little bit if we need to create some, sp some more spacing for the third row instead. But when I bounce myself over and look at third row spacing, like this is actually pretty good because this second row seat is literally back as far as it'll go. With that seat, my knee is just touching. So not a ton of space back here when that second row is all the way backwards. But like I said, we can move these things backwards or forwards if we need to. Ugh. Pop that down so you can see me a little bit more. So a few things to point out back here. Like I said, spacing wise is actually pretty nice. Like I'm kind of surprised at how much space is actually back here. Like up overhead with me sitting fully upright, I've got about an inch of head space. So not a ton of space, but I mean, typically I'm not gonna be sitting in the third row being six feet tall, but at the same time you choose the short straw, you'd be able to fit back here comfortably. Now, a few things to point out. We do have a little bit of storage along the left side there. We've got a few bottle holders. They're pretty small holders, but they're at least there. And then we've got quite a few power points back here. Like we've got four total USB ports in the third row, two in the driver, two in the passenger, USB as well as our USB-C. So great job on Jeep for throwing so many power points back here. And one of the cool things, up overhead, we've got a little camera there. And that's a neat one for a few reasons. So it actually, I don't wanna say a nanny cam because in the Jeep world, they actually call it a fam cam, which is kind of an interesting choice of word. But what it does is it gives the driver the option of seeing what's going on in the second and third row. So you've got kids that are screaming, yelling, et cetera, fighting. There's a button that we can press on that Uconnect media screen in order to see what's going on in this back row. Now for my first impressions of the second row, this is actually pretty nice back here. Super comfortable, very spacious. As I said, we do have a few options for this middle row. So by default, it's just going to be a six seat configuration with an easier pass through to the back. We'll have dual captain chairs there. Now there is the option, as you can see here, for the bench seat instead. So the bench seat, it's one of the cool things about that is that if you need something with a seven seat configuration, good option. And with these seats, because they literally tilt up and fold forward, you don't necessarily have to worry about spacing the same way or easier pass through to the back there. Super Super simple inside of this thing, which is typically not something we see that often with third row vehicles. So it is cool to know that Jeep was kind of forward thinking with the way that they designed these seats. Now, like I said, the seats themselves are actually surprisingly comfortable. And with the driver's seat set up for somebody six feet tall, I still have plenty of knee space here. So plenty of knee space, plenty of foot space. Up overhead, I've got about three, yeah, it's about three inches roughly of head space. So plenty of space back here, which is great. And one of the cool things about this second row is that we've got a little lever in between our legs there so we can literally slide this seat forwards and backwards a little bit to create more space for people in the back. So with the seat pushed up even more, so I'm still fairly comfortable in this third row, I created even more space. So now I'd be more comfortable in that third row as well while still having more than enough space for the second here. So that's definitely a nice thing. Now, the seats themselves, we do have option for cloth or leather, depending on the trim level of the vehicle we're looking at. And there are all types of leather, again, depending on which trim. Now, overall, like I said, great look. We do have some pockets in behind the first and the second row there. A series of different climate control settings just in behind the armrest there as well. Now, one of the cool things inside of the limited trim level, we do have second row heated seats. Now, the heated seats are going to be the outboard seats. So we're never going to have a middle seat that's going to be heated inside of this thing. And one of the nice things is as we get into some of the higher trim levels, we do also have the option for a ventilated second seat and a front row ventilated seat as well. So really, really nice for those warmer summer months. 
months. But other than that, we've got some basics for our vent control there as well. Moving down, we've got a 150 watt power point. So our traditional wall outlet, we can plug that back in here. And we've got even more power points. Like it's kind of insane how much power, all the power. Then we've got two more USB ports and two more USB-C here as well. So we've got a total in the first, or sorry, in the second and the third row of eight total power points here. And just from what I see there, there are four more inside of that front row as well. So a boatload of power points all throughout this vehicle, which is definitely a nice thing. A few other things to point out back here. We do have cup holders. So two cup holders there. And what else? We've got some basic for our lights there so we can control our cabin lights. We've got a handle, a little hook along the side as well. We do have some basic vents just beside, or I should say just behind our driver passenger seat there, which is kind of nice. We can control the venting there. We've got our basic, so our unlock lock, window up and down, and then we've also got a little storage space along both of our second row doors as well. So kind of neat what they've done back here. Right now, taking a peek along our driver's side door. So we do have intelligent access for the vehicle. So literally all we need to do is slide our hand in the door there, and that actually helps us unlock the door. So it's really neat that we don't need to get our, our key out of our pocket to be able to unlock the door. Taking a peek, as you can see there, we do have our seat memory buttons. Looking down, oh, first of all, beautiful wood grain. I love the look of this thing. Looks super, super sharp. Now, as we start to move inside, as you can see there, we've got our basics for our side view mirror control. We've got our window up and down, lock, unlock, etc. Down a tiny little bit more, we do have a few cup holders and a tiny little bit of storage there as well. Just to the left-hand side of the steering wheel, series of different buttons as always. So we've got our basics for our control settings for our lights. So we can go auto, etc. turn them on, off. We've got the button for our fog lamps and we can go figure out what's going on with the brightness of our cluster screen. Taking a peek, we are manual adjust for our steering wheel inside of the vehicle in this specific one as well. Just below that, we do have our electronic parking brake. We also do have our hood release there. Love what Jeep has done to this thing. So first impressions in the limited trim level, this thing is absolutely gorgeous. Now, there are a few things that were added onto this one that aren't going to be standard, like this larger Uconnect 5 media screen. You're at least going to get the Uconnect 5 screen inside of this one, and that's going to be an 8.4 inch that's going to be standard, but we do have the option for this larger one, so 10.1 inches. Beautiful look there, and it is so smooth and so user-friendly at the same time. But one thing to point out, this is just going to be a basic walk around of some of the basics of the actual steering wheel as well as that media screen. If you're looking for a fuller walk around, you want to know how Android Auto, Apple CarPlay work inside of this, setting things up, check down in the description below because I have put together a comprehensive video on that as well. So we've got our standard left turning sticks or actual turn signals. One on the right is going to be for our front as well as our rear wiper. Now, just in behind, I love this. We've got paddle shifters that feel so, so nice. I love it. I love the design of it. Nice, sleek. And then in behind, as always, typical with Jeep styling, we do have our buttons in the back there, which are going to let us change the radio station, change our sources out. We can increase, decrease the volume as well. And it's just, it's so comfortable the way that they've got it positioned in behind the steering wheel there. Pad on the left-hand side is going to let us figure out what's going on with this gorgeous cluster screen. And then we've got some options of answering, hanging up on phone calls and things like that. Looking along the right-hand side, we've got our adaptive cruise control system. So our smart cruise, and that's going to be our set it and forget it cruise control system there. So it is nice to know that that is available as an option inside of this vehicle. Now, inside of the entire vehicle lineup, we are push button start inside of this. So it doesn't matter if you're in the base trim level or if you're in the fully loaded summit reserve. So it is push button start, which is definitely a nice thing. Now, we also do have a series of different buttons that are along the top there. So very first one on the top left hand side, that's going to be your auto start stop button. So that's the one that's potentially going to kill power to the engine if we're stopped for an extended period of time. We can easily adjust that one. We've got our lane management system. So that's the one that's potentially going to give us either a little bit of a steering wheel shake or keep us in our lane as well. We've also got our traction control system. So we can turn that system on or off. We've got our four way blinkers and then our park sensing system. A few other buttons along the top there, which when we're in the higher trim levels, we've got our park assist system as well. So the vehicle can help us out with parallel and perpendicular parking. Now this specific one, the limited trim doesn't have that as an option, unfortunately. Taking a peek at the media screen itself, as I mentioned, this is going to be the larger 10.1 inch screen that is optional inside of this thing. Now, standard in some of the higher trim levels, available as an option in some of the lower ones, which when we get this upgraded system, it means that we also do have factory navigation built in as well. But even if we didn't have an option with factory factory nav, we can still hook up through Android Auto and our Apple CarPlay to use Google Maps, Apple Maps, Waze, things like that directly through this middle screen. If you want to know how to set all those things up, check down in the description below for that walk around video as well. 
but I love what Jeep has done with this. Like the, the styling, the transitions between each screen, it's just, it looks so, so nice. They did such a great job. On the home screen, we've got the flexibility of being able to add in individual widgets. So we can customize the way that the home screen looked, which is definitely a nice thing. We do have heated front row seats. We've got our heated steering wheel. And then we also do have optional ventilated front seats as well, depending on which trim level of the vehicle we're looking at. We've got some base notification centers. We've got different options. So for media, we've got our AM, FM, Sirius XM. We've got an auxiliary cable option down there as well. So our three and a half mil jack. If we've got one of those old school ones, we can plug that in as well, which is a nice thing. We can listen through USB audio if we want to. If we had a USB stick with MP3s on it, we could also plug that in in order to listen through that as well. So definitely a cool thing. We've got some basics for our comfort, which same thing. They did such a great job on the way that this thing looks. Navigation, like I said, we've got factory navigation and it actually is fairly nice and responsive. We can do pinch to zoom, things like that as well. So pinch zoom in, pinch zoom out, etc. We've got our phone connections, which like I said, we've got Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. We can hook a number of things up as well. If we want to set up multiple phones, multiple devices, we can set up priorities for certain phones as well. Getting into our vehicle settings, we've got a ton of different things. And the big ones to point out here would be some safety assistance settings. So we've got our auto emergency braking. So if the vehicle senses a potential collision, it's going to actively brake for us. We can turn that off if we really don't want it. We've got our active lane management as well. So that's the one that's potentially going to give us either a little bit of a steering wheel shake or it's going to gently nudge us back into our lane. So think of it as in those old school bowling lanes, the ones to make sure we didn't get a gutter ball. If the vehicle senses we're cutting over into a lane without signaling, we'll get a little nudge to jump us back into our lane. You can turn that one on or off if you want to as well. And you've got quite a few different options there. And we've got a number of other options that are available. Now moving down a tiny little bit, we do have a series of different buttons here. So we can turn our screen off. We've got some basics for our climate control system as well. Dual zone climate control inside of this one. We've got the, our tuning rocker, which we can tune this way if we want to. We can tune on the screen, but we've also got a voice command prompt on our steering wheel and we can use that in order to navigate. Mm -hmm. We can change radio stations. We can send text messages, things like that, just using our voice instead. So nice that we've got that option. We've got a little cover here, which when we lift that one up, it reveals a few things. So we do have a few USB ports and four USB ports in the front here as well, which when we add that up, we've got so many USB ports back in this vehicle. It's kind of ridiculous. We've also got a 12 volt power point in there as well. Moving down a little bit more, we also do have some selector switches. So we can go between sand mode, snow mode, sport mode, and an auto mode. So the vehicle can determine which mode we should be in. I honestly, I, well, I love the sport mode. It's kind of no, you know, it's no secret that I love it. So I would typically ride in sport mode myself. With, with the exception of in the winter time, I'd switch out to the snow mode, but each mode will do something different. So when we're in the snow mode, it's gonna play with our traction and stability control to help with wheel slippage and things like that. Comparatively, the sport mode is going to let the RPMs go higher to give us a sportier performance, like a raw more type of a performance. Now the vehicle itself does also have a system called QuadraLift. That's available in some trim levels of the vehicle. And one of the great things about that system is exactly the way it sounds. It's got the option of being able to lift the vehicle up so it can go up and down with it for up to 10.5 extra centimeters in additional height. Now we do also have the option for water fording up to 24 inches, depending on which trim level that we could go with because that system is going to give us the flexibility to have the vehicle sit a little bit higher. Moving down, we do have a few cup holders there. And like I said, the basic styling of this, like it is so nice. We've got our wood grain along the sides there across our entire dash, nice leather rep dash as well. And we do have the option in the highest trim level. So the Summit Reserve for a suede headliner instead. Like we've got our traditional style headliner as well, but it is cool to know that if you want something a little bit nicer, it is available there as an option. Now, when we get inside of that Summit Reserve, we're going to have 21 inch tires, ventilated second row seats as well. So we'll have our heated ventilated first, heated ventilated second as well. We're going to have our park assist feature and a number of other things. The armrest itself is kind of neat. It reminds me of a few other manufacturers because we've got two separate trays. So we've got our base, we've got a little bit of storage there, secondary handle, which reveals our actual storage compartment. There's no extras in there. Like we don't have anything like extra USB ports because we've got them everywhere else, but it is nice that we've got some storage there. And we can have each tray kind of go up and down independently of one another as well. So definitely a nice thing that Jeep has adopted that system there. As we start to move up overhead, we do have a manual dimming rearview mirror in this specific trim. We do have the option for an auto dimming one if we're in some of the higher trim levels. 
we do have our sunglasses holder there. Now this one has the panoramic roof, so gorgeous, gorgeous look to it. We do have the option of venting it up if we want to, so the front part is going to vent up. We can easily lower that down and we can easily open this thing up as well. So it's literally single button press, let there be more light, ah, so nice. So it opens up quite a little bit, which is definitely a nice thing. Like we are open quite a bit there. And then we just do one button press in order to auto close it up as well. So very straightforward there. And then the button along the right hand side is going to be for our shade. So we can easily close the shade up if we want to. And that's a neat one. So you have to make sure you're fully closed before you hit that shade as well. So something to think about there. But like I said, what button press? Will it go all the way? Will it go all the way? Is it gonna go all the way? Yes, it will. All right, now up a bit a bit more, we've got our assist as well as our SOS mode. We've got our basics for our running lamp control as well. And then we've also got our trunk release. So we've got power inside of this one. So that switch is going to let us bring that up and down as well. Looking at the actual visor, so we've got a business card holder along the front. We've got our optional home link system. So if we've got a garage door opener at home, we can easily program that one in. We've got a vanity mirror with a little light and we can also extend this thing out. Can we? Yes, quite a little bit if we need to block some set out as we go. So overall, like I said, first impressions of this thing, really, really nice. Now, one of the cool things about the Grand Cherokee L, we do also have the option for a heads up display inside of some added packages. So if you like that added technology, it is available there as an option, not going to come standard inside of some of the lower trim levels, but it is nice to know we can absolutely add that thing on if we appreciate those types of features. But let's take this thing out for a quick spin and see how it handles. Now this is just the base, so the 3.6 liter Pentastar engine. We do have the option for the 5.7 Hemi, which will definitely make a difference in the overall driving experience. Having said that, this thing is still pretty plenty powerful for the engine size. So how it actually holds up in day-to-day -day driving is going to be another question. So gonna be doing a little bit of city driving, a little bit of highway, maybe head up to the country a tiny little bit and see how it goes. Now this thing is not broken in yet, so I'm not going to go too, too fast with it. That was nice. For the vehicle size, that was pretty good. Good start. All right. The paddle shifters, though, in this thing are really, really nice. Like, really well positioned. I love it. Like, just sits comfortably in behind your hand there as you go. Now, that is, it, it's interesting because, like, it's at a position where, like, normally I probably wouldn't use the steering wheel like normally i'm just like one arm up like usually my left arm but uh, having it just right where it is like it's at three and nine o'clock um so i mean are you going to be driving with that probably not but i mean if you do end up flipping that way it is, it is easy enough to be able to adjust these things which is a nice thing here we go ah the unruly students who needs to cross at a crosswalk that's outrageous I remember when I was young. Oh. <laughs> Alright, so I'm gonna okay, I'm gonna go for a minute or two in the auto mode and then I'm gonna switch it out to the sport mode so you can hear the difference because you can literally hear the difference. So I'm gonna put my foot down a little bit, give it a little bit of gas. You're literally gonna be able to hear what the difference is between the normal versus the sport mode instead. Okay, and speed increase, so here we go. All right, so respectable, respectable, held the RPMs nicely there as well. And it's a non-turbocharged engine, so naturally aspirated, which means that it pretty much is like foot down instant power. We don't have to worry about turbo spooling up or anything like that. But like I said, that's one of the interesting things because under the hood, there is still quite a little bit of space down there, which means that you could technically throw in an aftermarket supercharger or a turbocharger if you wanted to, if you wanted a little bit more of a sportier performance. Okay, ready? Gonna give it a teeny little bit of gas when this guy goes. Here we go. Oh yeah. Oh wow. I don't know if you heard that roar. That that was nice. And I was barely even touching the gas there. Oh, that's nice. That's sport mode for you. That's what it'll do. Okay, you're gonna do it again. A little bit. It's pretty nice, <laughs> pretty nice for what it is. Oh, uh, it's great. And one of the nice things here, the headrest itself is fully adjustable, so we can literally move it up, which is great. But one of the great things is that we can tilt it forward as well to give us a little bit more stability for our neck there. One of the easy things, if we want to adjust this thing a little bit easier, we just pull it forward until we stop hearing clicking. 
and then just snaps back. So if you want to create an even more comfortable positioning for your head, you could absolutely do that. Ooh, hello, 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 off-road. All right, and gonna give it a sec, give it a little bit of gas, and three, two, and... Oh yeah, screamed up to like 6,000 RPM there. It was like, hello, I'm alive, I'm alive. Some sort of weird Frankenstein's monster there, but it sounded beautiful. Like I said, this is just the base 3.6 Pentastar engine, like the 5.7 Hemi, night and day difference. Okay, it's kind of nice. So it lets us know, even on the map, like this is such a small detail. It would be nice if it came up on the screen, but at least on the map, it literally is going to let us know what the speed limit is. If we're traveling slightly above the speed limit, it's, it's gonna let us know there's a little warning sign when it does. So I'm just gonna go like one kilometer, yeah, even like one kilometer an hour over and you get a warning message letting you know on the actual screen itself, on that media screen, letting you know that you're going a teeny little bit too fast. That's kind of cool. Nice small safety feature. That's so neat. So neat. All right. Like I said, it would be nice if it was on that cluster screen instead because chances are good I'm looking at the cluster screen. I'm not going to like shoot over and look at the side there. I don't think there's actually an yeah, there's no option for it either. Oh, interesting, okay. Uh, overall feeling comfort-wise, this is great. I I still can't go over the nice look of the media screen. Like, I love what Jeep has done with this thing inside of the Uconnect 5 screen. The wireless Android Auto Apple CarPlay is brilliant to keep that as a default inside of this thing is great. And the overall layout, the look of this thing I think they did a great job. It's it's interesting that they added some color to the buttons up along the top there for so for our assist and then our SOS mode. And they've given us a couple of colors there to be like, hey, these buttons are actually useful for something if you absolutely need them. So it is kind of nice to know that we've got that option there. Well, folks, that was a look at the 2021 Jeep Grand Cherokee L. What did you think? Adding in that third row, I think was a brilliant idea on Jeep's part because they've utilized a lot of the unused space in the back there, which is great. One of the big benefits there is that all of a sudden this puts it into a lot more competition with a number of other vehicles as well. But what were your overall impressions? If you have any questions, drop them in the comment section below as well. Share your thoughts with me. And if you have an idea for a future video, let me know and I'll give you a shout out when that video is shot. But if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your social networks. Think about subscribing to the channel and until you see you next time, take care.